This video is made for adult collectors because Tidal Wave. Tidal Wave. I have been looking forward to this thing for ages. Ever since I was told about it a couple years back, this has quickly become my most anticipated Titan. But does it deliver? Well, now that it's out, thanks GameStop for randomly calling me a month before its release saying they got him in. Jokes aside, this thing is sick. There is a lot of play value here, even for a Titan. Normally a Titan is a robot, an alt, a base, and another figure of some kind to go with it, be it a MicroMaster or a Deluxe. Then there was the new Metroplex that had two alts, a robot, and a massive, like, interactive weapon. Then we got the Nemesis, which was just robot and ship. Tidal Wave has a robot, an alt, three separate alt modes, a base mode, three smaller alt modes, and a combination for Megatron. That is a lot of stuff. And the plastic. Compared to, say, the Nemesis or Zarak, it feels a lot better, which it should, because it's a tad bit smaller than most other Titans. It's about the same height as the Ark. I love all the details, though. I don't have my old one anymore, but it shares a lot with that older toy. The pistons on the thighs, the details inside the legs, and the aircraft carrier detailing on the arms all sell how big this dude is supposed to be, and more. I like the deco choice here, going for a more show-accurate look. The purple is a nice, deep, rich shade of purple, and the two different types of gray. I'm also a massive fan of the yellow lights. It really sells how big this guy is supposed to be with those before-mentioned details. Head sculpt is fresh, the lines are all sharp and angular, but also smooth. The paint on it is nice too, the lush silver and the lights on his head, I love that look. He has massive feet, so this thing is not falling over. And then the ratchets. All the ratchets feel super solid, and they don't feel like those kind of crappy hollow ones the Ark and Nemesis have. These ones feel like they have some meat behind them. Sometimes a bit too much meat. The knees. Let's get in to the knees. I do hope this is not a widespread issue. It doesn't seem like a huge widespread issue as Trypticons was, but there are a few people who have had this, so it is worth pointing out. The knees can potentially explode. So the spring provides too much force that can rip the teeth of the ratchet out of its mountings, causing the knee to collapse. The easiest way to fix that is probably taking the four screws out of the leg and just snipping the spring by like half a ring or a full ring. MGO also suggests putting like joint lubrication in there, that could also be a solution. But there are easy fixes to the issue. Mine feel completely fine and are not stiff, but I may still trim the spring just a little bit after the video just to be safe. But that's like the only big issue personally to me and my copy doesn't seem to be affected by it. I know some don't like the back being empty with this bit here, but like you can use the butt flap to kind of cover most of that. That's what I do, because it, it, and then it doesn't bug me. I will say in poses, he isn't the most dynamic looking. Like, he can't do any crazy shit like Metroplex, but what he can do is not bad. But his robot plate doesn't stop there. You can take the fingers, the back, and the legs apart with this, like, mini dark fleet. And he looks mostly complete still without it. They made sure that he will look like a figure that's not missing bits horribly. But you can take these little dudes and combine them with Megatron to form Burning Megatron or Galvatron once he comes out. And this is why his shoulder pads don't move with the shoulders because of all this stuff. But Burning Megs is cool. I still wish the tiny Dark Fleet though could form a mini Tidal Wave or maybe a mini aircraft carrier combo because they can't do that. His posing, he has all the joints, but due to how like this works, it makes things a tiny bit awkward. So the head can rotate, so you can do a full 360. Then you have this joint right here you can unclip so he can look down. The shoulders, they have a backwards butterfly joint due to transformation. You can do that. They can also go forward a little bit, but they don't they don't stay. Nice clickety ratchet going around. The arms can go out that far. You have bicep rotation. Over 90 degree bend at the elbow. That can come off. Oh, it just pegs on. Okay, that just pegs on. The fingers, the thumb can move and rotate. And these fingers are all attached together, but they can move as well. And then you can open the whole hand if you want. The hip skirt is one piece. The one piece is, it's one piece because of all these on it, but he does have a waist joint. And I have a squeaky ratchet. Hips can go forward that far. They can go back pretty much all the way. They can go in and out. 
you have ratcheted thigh swivels, you have those knees. They can bend about 90 degrees. Ah, there we go. And then the feet, you have ratcheted ankle tilts. You can't see that, you have ratcheted ankle tilts. But when you move the ankles back, the combining pegs like to come out, which is a tiny bit annoying, but this, that's like a nitpick. But yeah, that's his posing. He's got a lot of stuff. He's just not as posable as say Metroplex was. Also, you break up a sweat trying to pose this thing. So that's the robot. He does have a base mode. There are a lot of things you can do with the base mode and it looks neat, but it isn't a mode I think I'm gonna ever put it in again. Okay, so it is unfortunate that you can't not disassemble him to transform him, but because I'm doing the disassembled mode first and then the reassembled mode later, it works for the video, I guess. So get your fingers back in place. To start with, we are going to tear his arms off. So you just pull and they come right off, but they're really solid, even though they're super easy to like pull off. They don't come off unless you like grab a very specific way and pull it off. Then you wanna close this up and fold that in. Straighten out the arm and rotate it. We're gonna flip that flap up. We're going to open this section, rotate the fingers around, close that up, and then just sort of fold that over. And that is one half. The other half is ah, yeah, pretty much the same, except you fold up the command bridge as opposed to folding out that little pointy bit that all aircraft carriers have that I have no idea what it's for. What's it for? If somebody knows, please let me know because I have no idea what this is for on aircraft carriers. But you peg that together and that is the aircraft carrier mode. Yay, all right. Let me put this somewhere on the floor for now. The next step is removing the upper half from the lower half. So the legs kind of work like Combiner Wars where they slot in like that and latch into place. So slide them out. We'll do the legs last. We'll do this boat thing first. So to start with, we rotate the viewfinder so I can see. You wanna take this chest section here and bring it up it's on a double hinge. So you bring it up, fold the back plate down. This will fall out because mine doesn't stay in super secure. So when things start to click, it falls out. So I'm going to remove it. Then you're going to rotate these around and then rotate this, fold it down, snap it into place. It's got to peg in in like several hundred different spots inside and at the front. But once that's in place, bring the legs forward. Try not to pinch your fingers in the ratchets though. I've done that before a couple times. And there you have, well, actually I'm gonna fold the guns forward because that's what I like doing. But there we have the pontoon boat thing. I don't even know what this is. And then finally this. So to do this, you wanna fold the feet, flip this out, peg it in, fold out the wing, Open this section up, rotate the knee in, and that's one, one done. Okay, the other one, there is actually no difference. You just do the same thing again. Bring all this out. Actually, before you peg that in, open this up. Fold the knee in, close it up, and then you peg it together. There you go, that's all the vehicles. If you put pressure on this very specific spot, it will come apart. But these look great. I love how giant and heavy each piece of the Dark Fleet is. There aren't many new details exposed, but it still looks super cool. There are certain spots though, where you can tell the difference between the purple ABS and the purple palm, but it's only in a couple spots. I dig how big this like pontoon boat thingy is. I don't know what this is, but it is massive and the cannons can still rotate and move. I love that. But my favorite part is the combo vehicle, like the big one. All right, let's combine the idiot to make the big idiot. So to start with, you're gonna take this section, you're gonna lift it up. That's gonna unpeg these. Then you're gonna bring these out like so. And we're just gonna open them up a little bit so that we can take this and you wanna clip it together here. Come on, there we go. Oh, that fell out again. And then this will go and hug the head of Tidal Wave. Clip the other side together. Ah, and then bring this down and these pegs will now peg into the inside of the cannon parts as opposed to the outside of them. And this, lining this up can be a bit of a pain because these have to be pushed as far back as they're supposed to go. And then you can get it all lined up and there we have that. Now we're gonna take the pontoon and press it in the pressure point. 
And then you're going to flip these connector pieces out on each side, and they're going to peg into these little holes on either side of the legs. And they will also peg in up here, and they will slot into the back of the ratchet here with his toes. So you get all that lined up, make sure the clip is completely flat out, and then struggle to see, because you can't see, there we go. We got that one in, and then we have that one in. Then we'll just put this back inside again. And that's the big boy mode. This is my favorite alt mode configuration. It is so massive and cool. And there are some more features here, like the sheer size and well, well the size, but you can also tilt this portion up at the front like an actual aircraft carrier ramp thing for launching jets or just launching cars. I love that so much. I just, I just dig the toy. The whole thing is, is cool. Like this big alt mode is very swooshable, which is hilarious. Knee issue aside, I think it is totally worth a pickup. It handles well, poses well, and has so many play features. I highly recommend getting one. And if you are concerned about the knees, there are plenty of fixes for it online, like gluing the teeth in place, snipping the spring, joint lubrication, loosening some things up a bit, so on and so forth. Like, they're not as bad as Trypticons was when he came out. They're still bad, and I hope that they fix it later on down the line. But it's not the biggest concern in the world because the fix is super easy. But that's my look at Titan Class Tidal Wave. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>